guide in this video, we're going to look at the ATIT's Math T6. This is a mixed review part one. If you have the ATIT study manual, the questions that I'm going to be working here, all these as you can see here, are going to be similar to questions that you'll see in problems one through four found in the mathematics section quiz of the ATIT study manual. Also, what you can do if you have not done so already, go to idomath.weebly.com. You can see that link in the description below. Underneath test prep, go to T's test and ATIT's new. Um, this will be updated with these videos as I do more. But as you can see, I did uh, a series of videos where we went through section by section in the ATIT study manual. And now we're going to mix this stuff up like a mixed review. So problem number one, if you're following along with the manual, my problems are a little bit different, but it's even more practice for you to have. And that's what you need. So 1A, we want to convert 1 fifth to its equivalent decimal and percent. 1 fifth is a fraction. We need to convert this to a decimal and convert it to a percent according to this question. Since you can use a calculator on the ATIT study manual, uh, so basic four function calculator, 1 fifth any fraction we can just use division. So 1 divided by 5 is going to be 0.2 as you can see right there. So 0.2. So our decimal for this one is going to be 0.2. Now if you've watched my series on this, I talk about long division in there too, but I want to go ahead and get these ideas across to you as fast as possible. We could do long division to get this same answer. And also in that series of videos I did, I talked about how to convert decimals to percents. You can multiply this by 100, or you can just move the decimal two places to the right. The percent for 0.2 is going to be 20%. We move the decimal two places to the right, and that's how I'm getting that 20 right there. But again, just to kind of recap on that, just in case you forgot, I encourage you to check out those videos I did on the series where I break this down even more, but this is good for mixed review. If I take this 0.2 right here and multiply that by 100, that's how we can convert a decimal to a percent. So as you can see, we do get 20 and don't forget your percent symbol. So the next one, now we have a decimal number, 1.28. Let's convert it to its equivalent fraction and percent, 1.28. Well, what we can do to convert this to a fraction, one way we can do it is we can just ignore the decimal for right now, and I'm going to write 128. If we ignore the decimal, that's 128, right? What's the place value of this spot, though? If we look back at the decimal, this 8 falls in the hundredths spot. We got tenths, then we have hundredths. So we put 100 at the bottom since that 8 falls in the hundredth spot. If we had something that fell, fell in the thousandth spot, we put a thousand at the bottom. But you look at the rightmost digit, it falls in the hundredth spot. Here's our fraction. However, what we want to do to this is definitely uh, we want to simplify this. So the fraction is going to be 128 over 100, which is going to be, well, let's divide these by 2. We can definitely divide by 2. We probably could go bigger. 128 divided by 2, that's going to be 64. 100 divided by 2 is going to be 50. Well, we can divide by 2 again. So again, just kind of reiterating the fact here that you don't necessarily have to divide by the biggest number to simplify a fraction as long as you keep on simplifying. 64 divided by 2, 32. And then 50 divided by 2 is 25. So 32 over 25. Now on our calculator, we can check this as well. 32 over 5, if we divide that, 32 divided by, not 5, but 25, 32 divided by 25, check out what we get, 1.28. That's that decimal right there. So 1.28, that's the equivalent fraction. And since we have a decimal here, 1.28 is the exact same thing as 128%. Because all I'm doing there again is just moving that decimal two places to the right, or you can multiply by 100. I hope that makes sense. Now, 1C, now we have a percent, so let's convert it to its equivalent fraction and its equivalent decimal. Decimal can be done very quickly here. To go from a percent back to a decimal, do not move to the right. We want to move two places to the left. So 46.2%. If we move that decimal two places to the left, we're going to have 0 0.462. That is our decimal representation of 46.2%. I'm just putting the zero in front so that you can clearly see that decimal right there. Now, what about a fraction? There's multiple ways we can do this here, and I'm going to tie all these together. If you have 46.2%, um, what we can do there is we can write 460 or 
a percent is always going to be something out of 100. Something out of 100. Anytime you have a percent, you can always put it over 100 to get a fraction. Now, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take this decimal right here and I'm going to move it one place to the right to create 462. Okay? And as long as we do the same thing at the bottom, we can get an equivalent fraction. So I move that decimal one place to the right. Well, the decimal down here is right there after that zero. If I bump it over one place to the right, I get a thousand. Now I want you to notice something here before we simplify this. If you look at this decimal representation up here and we think back to what we did up here in this problem, ignore the decimal right here for a second. And if you ignore the decimal, we have 462. Notice the place value of the rightmost digit. That falls in the thousandth spot. Tenths, hundredths, thousandths. That's where I'm getting that thousand from. So notice we, we, we've gotten to this fraction here two different ways. And I know that can be confusing, but that's how you want to think about it. All these different ways of getting the same answer. 46.2%, you can put a percent over 100, boom, you got your fraction. Then I did this little trick here of where I moved my decimal uh, one space to the right to make this a whole number. As long as we do it at the bottom, that's totally fine. And then I'm trying to get you to relate these two. 0.462 is 462 thousandths. That's how we get that fraction right there. From here, we can divide. I'm going to divide by 2 since they're both even. Of course, we could grab the calculator here and uh, do this much faster. That's going to be, what, uh, 231, so 231. And this is going to be 500. And I don't think we can simplify that anymore. I think that's completely simplified. And just to double check real quick, of course, your questions on the T's test are going to be multiple choice. But, uh, and we can't use a calculator like this on the T's test, but it's still good to have one handy to do some checking. For example here, 46.2, and then we have a percent key on this calculator. So if I press enter on that, it's going to automatically give me the decimal representation, as you can see right there. Well, I can also do some other commands on the calculator. For example, I can convert this decimal to a fraction, and notice it gives me 231 over 500, which is exactly what I have right there. Just a quick way for me to check my work as I work these problems out with you. Now, the next set of problems. So again, we're looking at problems one, two, three, and four in the mathematics section quiz in the ATIT study manual. For this question here, it's a little bit different than what you'll see in the study manual, but I want to talk about order of operations. Um, many students will make the mistake here of subtracting these two fractions before they multiply, and we don't want to do that here. We don't have any parentheses, and if you think about order of operations, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. We want to make sure we multiply and divide before we add and subtract. I don't see any parentheses, I don't see any exponents in this problem, so we want to take care of our multiplication. So what we want to do first is we want to multiply these two pieces together. So I'm just going to bring my 1 6 down and I'm going to bring my subtraction down. I want to multiply these two fractions together. Multiplying fractions, top times top, so that's going to be 5, 1 times 5 is 5. Bottom times bottom, that's going to be 72. 9 times 8 is 72. So we've taken care of our multiplication first, and now we can deal with our subtraction. Now to subtract fractions, you need to get a common denominator. Whenever you add or subtract fractions, you must have a common denominator. Well, the common denominator here is going to be 72. 72 is going to be the best number to pick um, because 72 goes into itself and 6 goes into 72. Uh, this fraction here will not change because I didn't change the denominator there. However, for this one, we multiply by 12 because 6 times 12 gives us 72. So take your 1 times your 12 and you get 12. Now that we have common denominators, we can go ahead and subtract these. So this is how we subtract fractions. 12 minus 5 is 7, and we do not change our denominator. Now you may want to consider simplifying this, but that is already in lowest terms, simplest form. And just to double check that, I'm going to grab this calculator, and I'm going to type it in exactly like I said. And check out what we get. 7 over 72. So good. All right, number 3. Now we have some parentheses in here and we have some addition and some division. Now, just a moment ago, I was talking about, hey, we want to take care of multiplication and division before we add and subtract. That's only if we don't have parentheses or exponents to deal with. So now notice we do have a set of parentheses. Um, if these parentheses were not there, then we'd want to divide these first. But since we do have parentheses here, we do want to work inside of this first. So we're trying to add two fractions. 
the common denominator for those two fractions is going to be 10. That's going to be the least common denominator or least common multiple. 10 is the first number they both go into. So 2 times 5, that's going to give us 10. So we multiply the numerator by 5. 1 times 5 is 5. Well, notice 5 over 10 is the same thing as 1 half. Let's do this one right here. 5 times 2 gives us 10. So let's make sure we multiply by 2 up here. 3 times 2 is 6. And for now, I'm not going to, uh, well, I'm going to still keep this in parentheses. All I've done right now is get a common denominator. And I'm going to bring down the rest of my problem. So next, we can add these together. 5 plus 6 gives us 11 over 10. It's okay if we have an improper fraction here. And we are dividing by 2 ninths. The way that we can divide by a fraction, again, I mentioned this all in that beginner series, but I'm mixing all of these problems up now. The way you divide by a fraction is you multiply by the reciprocal, or you may have heard me refer to as keep, change, flip. We keep this the same, so 11 over 10. Change your operation to multiplication, and then flip the second fraction to 9 over 2. That's called multiplying by the reciprocal. The reciprocal is nothing but flipping a fraction. That's all we're really doing there. And now let's just go ahead and multiply this out. 11 times 9 is 99. 10 times 2 is 20. And we can leave this as an improper fraction. Uh, more than likely, it's going to be left like that on the ATIT's test. So checking that one real quick in the calculator. So as you can see there, I'm getting the exact same answer, 99 over 20, improper fraction. If we need to convert this to a mixed number, we could. Uh, for now, I'm going to leave it like that, just to save a little bit of time. Our last problem here, arrange the numbers from least to greatest, smallest to biggest. Back in the series, I'm, again, I encourage you to watch that if you have not, because I you know, break each one of these concepts down in more detail. But I refer to this as thinking about decimals, thinking about money. And since we can use a basic four function calculator, I'm going to convert all of these things to decimals if they're not decimals. For example, the very first number, six sevenths. So six divided by seven gives me this thing right here. And that's crazy. But I'm gonna copy that over just to have that to refer to. So that's gonna be that first number. Uh, the point eight oh is already a decimal form, so point eight oh. Eight percent. Convert a percent to a decimal. We need to move that decimal two places to the left. So that's going to be 0 0.08. 7 divided by 9. If you take 7 and divide by 9, you're going to get a whole bunch of 7s. Check this out. 7 divided by 9 is going to be a whole bunch of 7s. Sure, I see an 8 on the end. It's just rounding that last digit. So I'm just going to write uh, 0 0.7 with a bar over it. A bar is a common way to show a repeated decimal. Okay, and then this one's already in decimal form. That one's in decimal form, so negative 0 0.8. And I'm just going to stick an extra 0 right there for right now. I can do that totally fine. You can add as many zeros as you want on the right end of a decimal. And then we have this decimal here, negative, point, or negative 0 0.08. And then take your negative 2 thirds. If you divide this in the calculator, negative 2 divided by 3 is going to be negative, so negative 0.6 repeated. Now, these right here, I'm just going to write this as 0 0.77, uh, but it keeps on going. That's what 0 0.7 with a bar over it means. And I'm going to write this one as negative 0.66, and I'm going to just put some little dots there. Hey, okay, this thing keeps on going. Now that we have all of these things in decimal form, think about money. The smallest to the biggest. Which one of these is the smallest? Well, it's not going to be any of these positive numbers since we have some negatives up here. And remember, the more negative you are, if you think about money, uh, having like negative $20 in your bank account is worse than having negative $5 in your bank account. Because that means negative 20 means you overdrafted by $20, whereas like negative 5 is you overdrafted by $5. Neither one of them are good, but I want you to think about the more negative a number is, the smaller it is. So the smallest one up here is going to be this negative 80 cents. If you, that's why I wrote an extra zero there. Negative 80 cents because this one right here is negative 8 cents. And this one down here is around, you know, negative 66 cents, negative 67 cents, however you want to round that. But this is going to be the smallest one. So negative 0 0.8. This one right here, that's the smallest one up there. I'm still going to stick with these negative numbers that we have up here, and I'm going to cross that out right there. There's that one. The next smallest one, well, we got negative 8 cents, which is that one right there, 
And then we have negative 67 cents, roughly. Well, that's going to be more negative than negative 8 cents. So this is going to be my next smallest one right here, the negative 2 thirds. And I'm going to write the negative 2 thirds down since that was the original uh, way the number was given to us. The next smallest one is going to be the only negative number we have left since all of these are positive numbers. So negative 0.08. And then from here, it's just a matter of, you know, all of these other numbers are positive. So we want, we're writing them from smallest to biggest. So if we look at this one, 6 over 7, that's roughly 85 or 86 cents approximately. If we round off to the nearest penny, that's like negative, or excuse me, not negative. That's like 86 cents. This is 80 cents. This is 8 cents. And this is around 77, 78 cents. So the next smallest one is going to be this 8 cents right here. 0 0.08. Ooh, let me tell you what, let me write that as 8% to match the original way that we had it given to us. So 8% because that's the 0 0.08. So done with that one. Uh, the next one in the list, okay, how about looking at 86 cents, 80 cents, and this roughly 77, 78 cents? That's going to be the next smallest one, 7 over 9. And then these last two here going from smallest to biggest, the 80 cents, 0 0.80. And then our last one here is 6 over 7. So it turns out 6 over 7 is bigger than all of these numbers because 6 over 7 is like 86 cents if we were to round. Again, kind of reiterating what I've mentioned back in the series of videos I did on the ATIT's test. When you're talking about going from smallest to biggest and you have some fractions or some decimals or some percents, convert them all to decimals and think about money. And remember, the more negative a number is, the smaller it is and relate it to change. And that's what I did here, you know, 67 cents, 8 cents, 80 cents, 78 cents. So hopefully you get the idea there. But there you have it, that's problems one through four, very similar to what you see in the mathematics section quiz in the ATIT study manual. And that is it for this video. I hope it helped.